Good morning and welcome to worship here today as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Now, as uh, you can every week, if you haven't had a chance yet, head over to our website where you can download the worship bulletin for today. In that, you'll have everything you need to participate in our worship service, including the hymns. This morning, we begin with the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one a God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We read responsively Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a wild young ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. The second reading comes from the 19th chapter of the book of Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm not a super emotional person. You know, for the most part, I'm a fairly intellectual person. I have a mind that's good at dissecting a problem, coming up with solutions. I'm able to see a variety of viewpoints and ascertain where different people are coming from. I tend to approach topics and subjects from an intellectual, a studied position. You've probably noticed that. While many of us lead with emotion, and there's nothing wrong with that, that just isn't me. It's not how I approach the Bible. It's not how I approach social issues. It's not how I approach how I treat my patients. It's probably why I've always done so well in school. Traditional schooling is built for people like me. It's so I find it a natural way to learn and be in the world. And that's not true for everyone, as any teacher can certainly tell you. Now, it's not that I don't feel emotion, and it's not that I'm not moved by experiences and stories. I'm just one of those people who doesn't show a lot of outward emotion. I'm sure there are many of you who, who feel the same. Again, it's not a lack of emotion. You and I, who experience the world this way, do experience the fullness of human emotion. We just don't usually show it as much outwardly. It's why, in people like us, others remember distinctly times 
when they saw that outward emotion. I've heard so many stories from people where they say something like, I remember the first time I saw my dad cry. Maybe you have stories like that too. I've been thinking about this because there are only two times that I can remember when I've been, or I've felt like I was being moved to tears by watching the news. The first was September 11th, 2001. I was in the Haas Fine Arts Center at UWEC, a freshman music therapy student. I was sitting out in the lobby between the performance halls. Somebody said something about plane crashes. And cell phones weren't as ubiquitous back then, and they also weren't as smart back then, so information came slowly. Somewhere, people found some televisions that they pushed out into the lobby on carts. We sat around shocked as we watched the news of a terrorist attack that day and realized the sum and the totality of the life lost. The second time was January 6, 2021. I was sitting at my desk at work. At noon, a joint session of Congress met to tally the Electoral College votes, led by Vice President Mike Pence. Pence starts the session, uh, issuing a letter stating that he doesn't have unilateral authority to overturn the election. At 12.11, President Trump gives a speech to his supporters. In the speech, he urges them to march to the Capitol, and he says, quote, you will never take back our country with weakness. At 12.15, as the tally is being counted in that joint session of Congress, they come to the state of Arizona. An objection is filed by both a congressman and a senator. The joint session recesses as the Senate and House move into separate meetings to debate for up to two hours. At 107, a mob of protesters push past barricades and breach the steps of the Capitol. By 116, they're inside the building. Congressmen and women are being evacuated or they're sheltering in place. Capitol Police have guns drawn to protect our elected leaders. At two o'clock, shots are fired and a woman will be dead. By 248, we'll get reports that pipe bombs have been discovered at the headquarters of both the Republican and the Democratic National Committees. For three hours that day, there was an insurrection in this country. For three hours, our capital building was taken by hostile force, something that hasn't happened since the British did it in 1814. And by now, we've all likely seen the pictures of the devastation wrought by these terrorists. We've heard the reports of the planned attack on Vice President Pence. There's recordings you can hear of people in the Capitol saying, where's Pence? Get Pence. There was chatter on the internet about how they were going to hang him from a tree. We've heard reports of people urinating or spreading feces in the Capitol building. We've seen a Confederate flag and all it stands for paraded through the Capitol halls. We've seen an American flag removed and a Trump flag installed in its place. These are an affront. They are a direct assault on our Republic for no other purpose than to undermine the results of an election they do not like. The stakes for our nation and our world could not be higher. If these white supremacist terrorists are allowed to commit acts of treason and insurrection unchecked, it could, as commentators across the political spectrum agree, could spell the end of our Republic. We are living, assuredly, in dark days. You and I are surrounded by a preponderance of information, much of it false and much of it meant to mislead us and strike emotional chords in us that lead us to distrust institutions that are fundamental to our freedom. There are elements among us, I assure you, living in our communities who sympathize with those who stormed the Capitol and even some who would call for an overthrow of the government. Our politics and our allegiances have driven us further and further apart, fracturing our society nearly to its core. And we are seeing, maybe most clearly in a long time, 
the racism and the sexism and the white nationalism that's lurked beneath the surface of our society. And as we look toward the inauguration of our next president, calls for more violence and mayhem circulate in the darkest corners of the internet among groups committed to violence in the name of the overthrow of our government. Oh yeah, and we're still living in the middle of a global pandemic with surges across parts of our country. In Los Angeles County alone, someone dies from COVID-19 every 10 minutes. We are living in dark days. In the beginning, when God began creating the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. Darkness covered the face of the deep. Imagine with me, if you will, a human being living in the Middle East 600 years before the birth of Jesus. Now imagine that person looking out at the world around them. What do they see? Well, they see the buildings of the town they live in. And then they look out and they see a desert. They see a dangerous place devoid of water and food with animals that can kill you. The desert, that space outside the protection of the community is wild, it's scary, and it's a place of death. It is, in a word, chaos. So when they wrote these opening verses of Genesis, they weren't talking in the abstract. They were using what they knew to describe what they did not know. So as we come to those opening verses of Genesis, we hear that the earth was a formless void. In Hebrew, the words are tohu vavohu. Now, in my mind, I can't picture what a formless void means. I can't visualize that. But try these with me, if you will. A wild wasteland, an empty wasteland, a desert wasteland, a wild desert chaos. Do you start to get a sense of what the author of Genesis is getting at? The pre-creation earth is something like a wild, chaotic wasteland of a desert where danger lurks around every corner and fear fills the space. The past several days have felt a bit like that for me, maybe for you too. As I've watched the images come in, the video from the attack, and heard more about the plans and the weapons and the rhetoric that these groups used, the world has felt a bit more chaotic. And as I've read the news reports and analyses and considered the possibilities for what this next week and these next four years could look like in this country, our world feels a bit more like that wild desert wasteland. These people, these proud boys and their white supremacist partners want nothing more than to throw our nation and really our world into chaos. They want to bring something of that primordial state into the present because they think that if they do, they can then shape the future in their own image. But listen as our passage continues. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. All right, two more, just two more, I promise, Hebrew words. A wind in Hebrew is ruach. Ruach means breath or spirit. When God, when God takes the dirt and forms the human being, God will breathe God's own ruach into the human being to give it life. When the Greeks translate the Old Testament into Greek, the word that they use here is pneuma. And that pneuma is the same pneuma that descends like a dove on Jesus at his baptism. It is the Spirit of God with all her creative, life-giving power that is here hovering over the primordial creation. To the spirit swept over the face of the waters. That word swept in Hebrew is rahaf. Rahaf. 
Rahaf is a word that most commonly gets used to describe a hovering bird of prey over the chaos, over the wasteland, hovering with acute awareness of all that is happening, just waiting for that pivotal moment of creation, is the Spirit of God. And then without preamble, without flair or fancy, with nothing more than a spoken word, God creates light. Into this chaotic wasteland of the dark primordial earth, God speaks light into existence, and from nowhere, from absolutely nothing, light pulls itself into being at the command of its creator. And order is brought to the chaos. And if you're like me, if you've been struggling with what to think or say about these images and information that have filled our screens since Wednesday, Maybe this is the message we all need to hear. In the chaos, in the darkness, in the wild wilderness and wasteland, the Spirit of God is hovering, watching, and ready to bring order and light. There is no place, no situation, no chaos that falls outside the watch and care of God. There is no violence or hate that escapes God's redeeming love. There is no darkness that can shut out the light. From the very first moment of creation, God has always been intimately bound to this earth, calling light out of darkness and bringing order to chaos. It may seem like our world is out of control. It may seem like our society is fracturing. It may seem like the republic is falling. It may seem like darkness has covered the face of the world. But it is not so. It is not so because God has called light into being and brought order to chaos and promises that it will be forever so. And so it is fitting then that our gospel lesson starts with John out in the wilderness. John is out in that desert wasteland preaching repentance. John's calling the people to turn from sin and recommit their lives to following the commandments of God. And into that desert place, into that wild, chaotic wilderness, comes Jesus. Jesus will enter into the chaotic wilderness. He'll be baptized and be filled with the same spirit that hovered over the face of creation. In Jesus will be the new creation. Through Jesus, sin and violence and hate and the death of this world will finally and fully be transformed. Through Jesus' death, he will put to death the chaos and darkness that have come to rule our lives. And in his resurrection, he will bear all of us with him into new life, a life free from the powers of sin and death. Just as God called light into being and brought order to chaos, so too Jesus will call his disciples to be a light to a world sitting in the darkness of sin and brokenness. And just as death and tomb could not prevail over Jesus, so too the brokenness of our world will not prevail over the love of God for you and me. As disciples, you and I have been baptized into Jesus. We've been baptized into the mission of God for the sake of the world to participate in shining a light into darkness, bringing order where others experience only chaos. You and I are called to follow Jesus into the darkness, into the heart of the brokenness of our world, to redeem it for God. And so that baptism is no small thing. It's a dangerous thing. It's a wild thing. It is to be filled with that same spirit that hovered over creation and descended on Jesus. To be baptized is to align ourselves with the mission of God in Jesus and continue that mission each and every day of our lives. I don't know what this next week will bring as Biden and Harris are sworn in as our next president and vice president. And I don't know what President Trump will do these last weeks in office, and I don't know what the white nationalists might have planned or try to pull off to bring chaos into our world. 
But I do know this. There is nothing, not one single thing, that can overcome the love of God in Jesus to bring light, life, and salvation to this world. No president can do that. No political party can do that. No political agenda can do that. It is only through the creative power of God in the Holy Spirit and the redemptive work of God in Jesus that new life and light comes crashing into our world to fill all things. And there is no darkness, no evil, no chaos that can stand in the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We give you thanks, O God, for the church of Jesus Christ. We give thanks for all those who have been baptized into your Son, anointed with the Holy Spirit, and who boldly proclaim your gospel to a broken and hurting world. Bless us here at Pleasant Valley as we continue to seek new ways to serve you in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day, O God, for all who are sick and in need of healing. We pray especially for Joanne, Jan, Kara, Doreen, Loris, Gwen, Maureen, Catherine, Jerry, Emily, Martha, and Henry, and Carrie. Surround them with your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for all those who choose lives of service. 
We give you thanks for the men and women who serve in our armed forces, especially Alex and Brendan. Keep them safe and return them home soon. And in this week that we've had, we give you thanks for the men and women who serve in our communities as officers and in security personnel. We ask that you would keep them safe as we approach our inauguration. We give you thanks for, the Sh for Shelby and her family as they continue their mission in France, and we give thanks for Holly. And we ask that you would continue to pour out your spirit on her that she might be a blessing to all she meets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all those who are in jail or in prison, especially the inmates at CVCTF. Continue to surround them with those who will proclaim your gospel, that hearts and minds be turned to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, O oh God, in this week that we have had, the week of when we saw violence in our nation's capital, we pray for all our elected leaders. We pray that you would keep them safe as they perform the duties they are called to do, the job we've elected them to. We ask that you would look upon our nation this week as we approach the inauguration of our next president and vice president. Keep everyone safe. Keep us from harm. Bring peace to our streets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, O oh God, for all those who grieve the death of those they love. Keep them ever confident that their loved one now rests in you, and we will one day join them and all your saints in your kingdom that has no end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. And as we do each week, we just take a moment here to pause and thank you for your ongoing generosity through your offering. Certainly, as we have some in-person services throughout the winter, you can bring your offering with to those services or else, uh, as you'll see in the bulletin, we have where you can mail your offering each week if that's easier for you or certainly you could drop it off at church and just stick it in the mailbox. I know Monica is regularly checking those, but you can certainly mail them right to Roxy as well. And Again, as always, we, we thank you for your continued generosity in this um, unprecedented year that we have been having. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go, my children, with my blessing never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you. You are my own. In my Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.